Okay, testing, testing. Okay. Right, Chepo, we're going to start in a moment. I'm just waiting for the others to log on. Okay, I think let's get started. Uh, the others will join as we go along. Guys, um, I've taken a look at my previous notes that I've had for this section of work. Just check, it says my internet connection is a bit slow, okay. I've taken a look at the previous notes that I've had for this section of work and I actually threw out the notes. I don't like the notes we had previously. And I've actually just moments ago inserted two new sets of notes, which is actually just copies of the textbook, uh, the two textbooks that I made available to you guys. Um, I don't want you to use those old notes. So if you've, if you've used the old myosis notes, I was teaching from them again, and they are, they're just impractical and horrible. Please throw them out. Um, use the new notes I've uploaded just now. You'll see it says Meiosis Grade 12 Book Notes and Meiosis NTG, which stands for Mind the Gap. And that's what I'll be using to teach you on today. I'll see if sometime I can get a chance to make up some new notes for Meiosis. But the mind maps that I gave you guys to draw are very good. So use them. Also, um, Tepo, you will see, I think it's you that asked about the karyotypes from yesterday. Uh, when we do meiosis, you're going to get more and more familiar with some carrier types. You're going to see, I think you're stressing about something you're barely ever going to use, to be quite honest. You must know what a carrier type is. We barely ever use it. And then um, in the few instances where we do use it is uh, with relation to meiosis and when meiosis goes wrong. So you must know what a carrier type looks like. And you already seen it yesterday. And you must know that it shows all the chromosomes. So it's basically a picture of all the chromosomes, but the picture is just sorted neatly of all the chromosomes placed together. And that if we take a look at a human's chromosomes, we're gonna see 23 sets of chromosomes, 46 chromosomes or 23 sets of chromosomes. The last set of chromosomes are called the gonosomes, which because they determine the gonads, which is your testes, or in the case of girls, your, your ovaries. So they determine the sex. Um, but you'll, you'll see a few more um, carrier types as we go through meiosis. Okay, let's go through. Let's go through meiosis. I'm going to start off with going through meiosis in the mind the gap first. So um, what uh, an important note to make about meiosis is that when we take a look at mitosis, we went through um, IP on the mat, interface, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. And what's going to happen is in meiosis, you're going to pee on the mat twice. So you're going to have IP mat twice. So Prophase one, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two. So there's two, it, it goes, it, it divides twice. So we're going to have meiosis one, as you can see there, and then we're going to have meiosis two. And if it divides twice, if you think about it, if we have one cell and it divides once, we're going to have two cells. Then it divides again, so we're going to have four cells. So because it's dividing twice and because it's dividing twice, uh, what happened with mitosis is we double up on the chromosomes and then we take it back to normal. And now with meiosis, we double up on the chromosomes, then we divide it once to go to the normal, the fluid, and we divide it again and we go to half of the normal chromosomes that we have or a single set of chromosomes called haploid. I also want you to notice here that none of the, none 
of those um, cells over there actually look like the original cell. And that's another important thing about mahosis is we end up with four cells that are completely different than the original cell. Yes, Ruan, you have a question? So, so I'm, I'm a little confused, so with, um, yes? with the diagram. Okay. Uh, can we like go me. through the other diagrams? And as we go along, I think you'll have it um, in a bit more detail because this one gives very little detail. Uh, and so it, it might cause confusion because it doesn't give you enough detail about what's going to happen. Is there anything specific that bothers you about the diagram yes, that sir. doesn't look right to you? I oh, know, so it's just, um, I mean, the, the process, I, I don't understand what's happening. Okay, so we're going to go through the process. This is just a simplified summary diagram. Um, so we will go through the, the, the whole process in a moment, okay? Okay, so let's go through it step by step. Remember, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, PMAT, IP on the mat, okay? Now, interphase, we're going to leave interface out. Interface happens before the time. I'm just going to move to another place in my house where I've got a better internet connection. So the internet's a bit bad on that side. Okay. Okay, so we're going to leave interface out, but you need to know that replication has happened. Interface has happened and replication has happened in interface before we get into prophase one. Another important note or something that makes a, a big difference with regards to or a lot of mis, uh, kids make a mistake with is they remember mitosis. So we now identify the phases here. Then um, they, they say, okay, yeah, no, this is prophase over here. But they forget to say that it's prophase one or that it's prophase two. And that's important. I want you to remember that you need to note whether we're going through prophase one or whether we're going through prophase two. Um, and the same as for the rest of the phases, uh, metaphase one, anaphase one, telophase one, prophase two, metaphase two, anaphase two, telophase two. Let's take a look at what is happening over here. Okay, so um, we've already replicated. We've got replicated chromosomes over here. Okay, and we've already have chromosomes. It's no longer a nucleolus and chromatin material. It's now chromosomes. We can see that our nuclear membrane is starting to disappear. We can see that the sentry holes are starting to split and move to opposite ends of the cell. And I can see that I've got pairs of chromosomes over here. So how many chromosomes do I have here? I've got four chromosomes over here. So I've got four. That means I'm going to end up at the end of mitosis, I'm going to end up with two. Because now I've got diploid. And at the end of mitosis, I want to end up with haploid. Okay, let's go through a few other things here. Um, this is prophase, and one other thing that is going to happen here is what we see over there. Those two chromosomes are playing kissy kissy. The official term for that kissy kissy is crossing over. They're crossing over one another, and they're forming a structure called the chiasma. At that point, they are exchanging some genes with one another. So it's gonna, they're gonna cross over one another. Okay, so let's stop there. Let's stop there. And I see you guys have some questions. So let's take a look. Um, okay, table question. So what's the, what's the function of a spindle fiber? What is a spindle fiber? You're gonna see it now. When we get, when we are gonna get to an, um, the metaphase and anaphase, you're gonna see the function, okay. So I'll discuss that in a moment. Ruan, what's your, Ruan, what's your question? What does haploid and diploid mean again, sir? Okay, haploid means you have a double set of chromosomes 
And then um, a haploid, so is a single set of chromosomes, diploid, di, di, standing for two. Um, you have a, a double set of chromosomes, which means that instead of, it's a replicated set. So instead of just having a single set that codes, you have two sets. All of your body cells, every single one of your body cells, except for your sperm cells, are diploid but your sperm cells are haploid because they're going to fuse yes. with an egg cell with whoever you're going to have mate with one day uh, to form a diploid again. Okay, so it's a single, a uh, double set, diploid, single set, haploid. So, so I don't want to know what you mean by set. So. Just, uh, just ask again. I don't understand what you mean by sets. Okay, so in, if we take a look at the chromosomes, um, in, on a carrier top, I'm going to go back to a carrier top and show you. Let me just uh, make this smaller. You see if there's a carrier top here somewhere. No, in my other notes there are. Oh, I'm just going to open up my other notes quickly. And where's that carrier type now? I know I saw one in these notes. <laughs> okay, let me just open up one quickly. Okay, here's a typical karyotype. I'm going to open up this specific one. Okay, so there's a karyotype we see over there, and um, there's 23 sets. Do you see that's one set? Um, but they all, the, they, there's, so for each, and I can't, uh, let me just copy the diagram here, copy the image, just put it on here, edit, and let's just add a page. Just want to see if I can copy it here. Edit and paste. Come now. Hopefully this pastes. Ah, oh, no man. I can't get it to paste. Um, I want to just show you guys what the set looks like. some reason my computer is also super slow. Okay, so here we have 23 sets. Okay, here we have 23 sets. So there's a set over there. There's a set, that's one set. There's a second set. And it's 23 sets, but each one has two. So we have 46 chromosomes, if we count them. But each two chromosomes, we call them homologous pairs, homologous pairs. Each set um, has two chromosomes coding for the same type of structure. For example, um, there's going to be a gene on one of these. Let's say it's that one in number two. There's going to be a gene on there that codes for eyes. So the, there's a gene for eyes on this one as well as that one. So on both of them. But the one might code for blue eyes and the other one might code for brown eyes. And so that's a set, that's set number two. And there's 23 sets. And together, 
they make up 46 chromosomes. That, but, that is what we mean by a set. Okay. Let's go take a look at, go back to our initial diagrams. Okay, so that's prophase. That's prophase one. And in prophase one, we basically, we split the centrioles, spindle fibers start to form, chromosomes are formed, nuclear membrane is disappearing, and crossing over is taking place, which creates genetic biodiversity. That's another important note. Um, if we take a look at it, that chromosome, if we take a look at a single chromosome on here, that one will actually come from dad, and the other one will come from mom. But now, if they're crossing over, you're getting a mixture of the, of the genes from dad and mom because of crossing over. Now, let's go on to metaphase one. Now, metaphase one, we find that just like in uh, metaphase in mitosis, we're lining up on the equator, but now, we see double sets lining up on the equator. We see pairs lining up on the equator. So there's a pair, there's a pair. So it's still four chromosomes. We have pairs lining up on the equator. And what we, we also call them bivalence, bivalent pairs. We can also call it homologous pairs. Either one of those terms are accepted. So they line up on the equator of the cell. And I know it's metaphase one because there are still pairs. If it's metaphase two, it's going to be single chromosomes that are lining up on the equator. Now, we can see that crossing over has taken place already in prophase. So crossing over has taken place. And then there's another factor here that creates um, what we call genetic diversity, um, and that is what we refer to as random arrangement, which is a very bad word. I hate it. Um, the rest of the world don't refer to it as random arrangement. And um, please never call it random assortment. Uh, we don't accept that in the exams, uh, because if it's an arrangement, it can't be actually random. But that's the way they put it, random arrangement. And so which means that this one over here could be on that side. And so the two could be swapped around. They could swap around in, and which means that we, they could be on any, on either side of the equator. And that creates genetic diversity when we end up with our cells at the end. But you'll see why in a moment. Okay, let's move on to anaphase then in anaphase the spindle fibers that attach themselves to the centromeres that's the centromere that's the centromere that's the centromere that's the centromere it holds the chromatids together now the spindle fibers starts to pull and now Tepu, you can see why we have the spindle fibers they start to pull and they pull to opposite ends of the the cell they start to pull and so that's anaphase one. Then it splits up. Now the cell is split. So that's going to be a cell. That's going to be a cell. Now we're in telophase one, but I want you to see something very important here. If we go up here and we count the number of chromosomes in here, we said we had four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Four. When I get to here, in each cell, there's only one, two. So it was diploid. Now it's haploid. It was diploid and now it's haploid. So the moment that telophase one is finished, we are, have now got a haploid cell. It's not correct yet. There's still some processes that need to happen. But we went from diploid having a double set of chromosomes to having a single set of chromosomes. Then we almost immediately move into prophase two. In prophase two, again, the centrioles are going to split to opposite ends of each of those two cells. 
and move to opposite ends forming spindle fibers. The chromosome, they're going to attach themselves to the chromosome. So we're going to go to meter phase two. And where we have single sets of chromosomes now lining up on the equator. Okay, both of you have a question. Let's go through your questions first. Run. I to I the, uh, lower it, sir. Okay, just say again. I didn't, I forgot to lower mine, sir. Okay, no, no problem. Okay, Chepo, what's your question? Can you please go back to um, Profis 1? Those four chromosomes, are they in one cell or is it? Um... Okay, uh, just repeat the question. In Profis 1, on, they're in Profis 1, they're in a single cell. In propose for, two, there's two different cells. Oh, uh, in propose one, they divide from being one cell to two individual cells. Yes, not in propose already. There's no division in propose. I mean, in meiosis one. The, the whole in my host is one. They divide into two cells, and then they go through my host is two, and two divided are uh, two. Uh, if you take two cells and you divide both of them again. Then you get four cells. So in the end, and now, I'm going to have four cells. How many um, chromosomes are there in an individual cell? No in a, a, in a human cell, forty six. Yes. Forty six. So but are now you got to be careful. There's another element here coming. Are they replicated chromosomes or are they unreplicated chromosomes? You see. Because what you're going to see here, when we go to anaphase, let's go to anaphase. Do you see that the replicated chromosomes are now each of them are splitting in half? Yes. And so each of them are splitting in half. So we get an unreplicated chromosome. So in meiosis one, I'm only splitting up the pairs going from diploid to haploid. But when we split again, we're going from haploid to haploid. We split them in half, but now we go from replicated chromosomes to unreplicated daughter chromosomes. So it's not like we're no. splitting, um, we're gonna go half and in. We actually go, it, it stays haploid, but instead of being replicated chromosomes now, they're gonna be unreplicated daughter chromosomes which we see there in telophase, um, telophase two. And what I wanted to see in telophase two here is that take, take the chromosomes. Remember, when that chromosome, when the replicated chromosome splits, the chromatid that used to be the chromatid in a replicated chromosome now becomes his own chromosome. It's not a chromatid any longer. He's now a chromosome. He's now a daughter chromosome. And so that we find over there, that's a chromosome. Please write, there we go. That's a chromosome. So there's two chromosomes in there. There's two chromosomes in each cell. Two chromosomes in each cell. Two, 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 two. My pen is really, it's not even my pen. I'm writing my, my finger and my finger's not working today. Okay, there we go. There's two chromosomes in each of those cells we in the original cell, we had four. So it's now haploid instead of diploid. And not only that, can you please notice that each of these chromosomes look different. They don't look like one another. And so that means that we created the genetic diversity that we wanted because each sperm cell and each egg cell are different and that is why you might have features that look like your brother or sister um, or a sibling but you're not going to be exactly the same unless you're identical to them. I don't understand what question them, is why are you calling those um um those two why, why are the why are you calling them chromosomes and they supposed to be chromatids because like there's no, one the moment it splits a chromatid becomes a daughter chromosome. It's not a chromatid any longer. It's only a chromatid. 
if it's part of uh, the replicated chromosome. The moment it's split in half, that chromatid is no longer called a chromatid. It's now called a daughter chromosome or an unreplicated chromosome. So if uh, let's, uh, I'm going to go to the other book very quickly and just show you there. Okay, so there we've got a replicated chromosome over there. We've got two replicated chromosomes, each with their, each of them having two chromatids. Okay, there we've got a bivalent pair with two replicated chromosomes, each having two chromatids. But now, oh, take a look at what happened there. So this is a chromosome. This, that's a chromosome over there. But that's also a chromosome. This is an unreplicated chromosome, and that's a replicated chromosome. So they're both chromosomes. That's not a chromatid, that's a chromosome. It's just an unreplicated chromosome. But there's a replicated chromosome, and a replicated chromosome has got two chromatids. But it's only a chromatid if it's part of the replicated chromosome. So okay, so there's crossing and... over taking place. There is a karyotype we see over there. There's another karyotype. You um, replicated chromosomes, unreplicated chromosomes. Replicated, replicated, unreplicated. So the, um, the unreplicated chromosome is spotted with that um, central. I, I think it's a central male which joins those uh, two individual chroma, uh, chromatic yeah. uh, daughter chromatids. Okay. Centromere is still there in a daughter chromosome. But remember, when we go through my hosts, the centromere is going to split in half. It's going to split in half um, when, when anaphase 2 is happening. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. So um, I think what you need to do, um, and there's many diagrams that I'm going to show you here, but I don't want to take too many steps at a time and confuse you guys. I'd rather, I'd rather spend three, uh, two or three lessons on my hosts and let it sink in and let you do the practice questions because when you do the questions, that is when you are going to see or get more insight into the work. So what I want you to do now is there's two things. Um, you guys would have already drawn the diagrams of the mind maps. So in the Google Classroom, what I want you to do is maybe just go through the videos again, the videos again, and then there is a little task that I put out for you guys. This one over here that says, please complete the short questions on my OSIS. That's an electronic task. And then in this, these notes, in the Mahosa's grade 12 book notes, there's lots of questions. And so I want you to go through and I want you to try and complete those questions so that we can discuss those specific questions in tomorrow's lesson. So that when we, we can focus on how, because those are all from past papers, so we can focus specifically on the interpretation of my hosts. And once you start working with it, it just becomes easier and easier. Okay, let's have some, uh, do we have any more questions? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So could you go back to the original, um, the original slide you were showing us? The first one. When we yeah. Start it off. Okay, let me go back to that one. I want to switch off my video for some reason my video is went on okay there's the original i showed you okay and also the, the, um, oh yeah so, so can you go down sir okay to so the last slide we, we were on this one yeah that that, that no that one yeah that one so so 
in the left hand corner there's a white one and then the bottom right hand corner the left so um, there's a black one yes. so does that mean that one's from the from my mom and one's from my dad uh, technically, um, uh, basically, what, what's going to happen here is, uh, but be, please remember that when we take a look at this diagram, it is really, really, really oversimplified. It's extremely oversimplified. You must remember that over, if we take a look over here, yeah, we're pretending that crossing over only happened twice. That is not what, has, what really happens. Crossing over happens thousands of times. Every time that we go through spermatogenesis, um, the forming of the sperm, or oogenesis, the forming of the um, egg cell. So it's a really oversimplified diagram. You will never get a situation like this where we find it's only genes from that or it's only genes from them. We will never find that we get genes like this where it's only from that or only from them. It will always be a combination like that one, a combination of black and white and a combination of black and white, a combination of genes between mom and a combination of genes between dad. In fact, you should end up 50, 50 plus minus from mom and from dad. And remember that these are now gonna go in. They're gonna, um, those are gonna join up, but that one, is going to join up with an egg cell that's also mixed. So if we talk about it, this is basically, this would be your grandma and your grandpa's genes that gets passed on to you in the end. So there's another mixture and there's another genetic diversity element on top of that. Okay, and Tepi, you also had a question? So I think we didn't we didn't have lab science yesterday. Just say again. I'm saying um yesterday so we didn't have lab science yesterday. No, we didn't. You should have had physical science yesterday. We had the it's lesson insane. on Monday. Um, I'm sorry, it's by manner of speaking that I might have said to you, um, on Monday's lesson we went through mitosis. And we a little bit of my houses as far as I remember. We just just started, but we haven't done any detail. So going back to um, Monday's activity, right? It was from that past people. When they say um, ex uh, explain the protein synthesis, can you read um, our answers to you? Because I think they differ. Okay. Um, before you read the answers, did you actually watch the uh, the this discussion that was posted on the? On lessons, um, I did. Now I did the Google form, then gave me some of the answers. Then um, for the discussion, I didn't really watch it because um, the Google form gave you some of the answers. Okay. Except for the what I need you study. to do is I need you to watch that discussion. I need you to go and watch that video because that video is me walking through or reading through the um uh, or going through the answers and how you need to interpret those questions. So it's very important, and that are, because there's no way that I can discuss everything with you at this stage, and you're gonna run out of time every time then. What I need you to do is I need you to go watch that video and work through your answers and see the reasoning. If you then still have questions, please then uh, put it on the WhatsApp group, and I can answer it in that way. Even if you send me a voice note and I send a voice note back, but go and watch that video first so you can see the reasoning of how you get to the answers. Because I do it from a perspective of, I know how they mark it at the end of the year because I've been marking for a few years. I know how they interpret the, the, the questions and then answer it and I know where the marks are gonna be awarded. So I need you to watch that video, please. So, um, can I uh, send you the picture of my explanation sure. for protein synthesis? Yeah, take a picture, take a picture. And what I'll do with that picture is then I can just, on my computer, I can mark, um, I can mark it on there. And then I can give you an indication of how you've done. Thanks. Sir. Okay. Mr. Kilder, sir. Yes. 
Could you go up to the original cell, please? To the original cell? In uh, interface, yeah. Or profile one. one. Yes, sir. Okay. Let me just erase some of this so we can see it properly. Okay, what's your question? Well, that's profile. Oh, yes, sir. Okay, so. That's profile one. Hmm. Okay, so. Um, there's one black one and one white one. Does that exclusively come from your mom and your dad? That exclusively so I saw you cut off there. From the mom and the dad. And that is before, the, um, at that stage, that's when crossing over is going to happen, where they're going to start mixing the genes between whatever comes from mom and whatever comes from dad. But yes, that will, one chromosome will actually come from mom and one chromosome will come from that in each set, then, in each, in each um, pair. Yes, yeah, so I thought that um, the white one and the black one would have a common of your mom and dad. So, so one no, it's will not have... A, it's not a combination of mom and dad. The one will exclusively come from mom and the one will exclusively come from dad. And what will happen there is that what we find there is that they will be a mixture. The one coming from mom will be a mixture of the genes coming from grandma and grandpa on mom's side, and same goes for dad. And that's why then, crossing over is so important, is because yes, we don't want to take a single chromosome and pass it over. We want we want to cross we want the genes to be mixed, and that's why we find crossing over because we want to get a mixture of the genes when we finally end up inside the sperm cell or inside the egg cell. So then, um, theoretically, the child is a mixture of the parents, right? Yes, correct. And um, in one chromosome, there's mixed, there's um, genes from his mom and genes from yes, his dad. Correct. Yes, because of one crossing chromosome. over, there's going to be a mixture of genes from mom and from dad. And what's quite unique, if you take a look at some of those mixtures, uh, and because of crossing over, there's certain, um, certain genes that sit very close to one another. Like, for example, if we take a look at hair color and eye color, those genes are separate genes, but they sit so close to one another that when crossing over usually takes place, then they cross over together. So what we find is it's very unusual for someone to have a dark hair and blue eyes. It does happen, but it's very rare because the genes sit so close to one another that when crossing over takes place, they normally go together. And so normally we'll find someone with dark hair having brown eyes or dark eyes and someone having blonde hair will have blue eyes because those genes sit so close together during crossing over. Does, does mutation happen at the stop codon or does it happen? Okay, mutations doesn't happen at the stop codon. Mutations normally happen during DNA replication. Some mutations can happen during protein synthesis, but it normally um, is not the case. Normally, um, mm. if we find mutations, and mutations that happen during protein synthesis is only going to affect one cell or a few cells uh, that, that come from that, um, while mutations on the DNA that happen during replication, they can be replicated over the mutation can be replicated over, and that can cause a bigger problem. Yeah. So we can't hear you, sir. Um, okay, sorry. Uh, my internet connection is very bad today, and I'm not sure why. Um, I, 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 I tried to hear if there was another question. Did any of you uh, ask another question after the mutation question? 
I'm sure it's, uh, there's 20 seconds left. Okay. Okay, then we'll continue in tomorrow's lesson. I will post your homework on your WhatsApp group so you know what to do, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir.